Hey guys, what's up? We're gonna talk about uh, prophylaxis in chess. So prophylaxis, I mean, the word might sound a bit weird, but it's basically about preventing your opponent's idea. And here comes a very important thing I want to mention that sometimes you want to prevent it because you might be forced to do it. So in this case, the move is pretty much forced. But in other cases, you might do it for other reasons, such as, you know, making life harder for your opponent. Um, just also, you might not have ideas to play, so you might focus uh, on your opponent's plan. So this is also very useful. So, um, and also, if you have st studied theory, opening theory, you might already be making prophylactic moves. So we, we're going to check this. Or also, we can start with that. So if we if we go to an opening, for example, if we check the Benoni opening um, after d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, c5, and after d5, um, well, even the move d5 already, we might consider it as prophylactic, in the sense that if if Black wa here wants to exchange on d4. So, um, because this pawn on, on, the, on d4 is quite strong, so d5 is already prophylaxis against c takes d4. But, um, so if we get to this opening where uh, we're just going on checking the main line, um, which is bishop e2, at least the classical line, and after uh, both sides castle, so here um, black can play rook e8 as the main move, but also the move a6, which is a very typical move. And here you probably, if you don't play the Benoni as, as white or black, you probably might have seen that white sometimes plays the move a4 immediately. So, or maybe you play it yourself, and if you don't understand why, then you will see that the move a6 is preparing b5, First of all, just gaining space on the win side, but also threatening b4. And after the knight goes away, just taking on e4. So this a4 is a move that is typical. So it's, it's a prophylactic move, but also, this is also important that sometimes prophylactic moves, they also have another purpose. Um, also, white, instead of not allowing black to gain space on the queen side, also white might be himself wanting to, to gain space on the queen side. Just may maybe a5 might come as a move. Maybe not in the opening quickly because uh, uh, white still wants to develop pieces first. But um, if we put the pawn on, on a5, the, on the structure, we, we can see that um, white might target this pawn on b7 as well. So this move a4 is a very prophylactic move in the opening. So we, no, we are now going to check another example. So as, as I said, there's lots of examples in the opening, so sometimes you might be playing these moves. But I think it's also interesting to understand, you know, the what you do in the opening. So that's why I want to check these few examples. If we check the Rui Lopez, um, again, I'm just going to check one of the lines, one of the main lines, actually. So I'm, I'm, I'm checking, you know, um, mainstream theory and in this opening in this position which is typical line c3 planning to play d4 after black castles so here the main move is h3 so the move h3 which is um, I'm not uh, I'm not saying which is the best move at, at least is the most popular move the point is that after d4 black can play Bishop to g4. Still is another game, so but at least black is getting active and just planning sometimes to take here and put in pressure on, on d4. Now we're gonna check another position which is theory but played in the game Kasparov Karpov 1986 and this is a, a little bit more subtle. Uh, so here uh, it is white to play. So. Uh, what would you play here as white? You can pause the video and let me know. So in this position, 
if white plays a move like let's say a3 even a3 makes some sense because just giving a square for the bishop um, here black can take on d4 and after pawn takes it makes sense to give the pawn because it's central pawn knight to b6 just attacks the bishop and after a retreat such as bishop a2 here bishop g4 we see that black is getting quite active again pressure on, f on f3 and d4 so um, in this position basically black looks a bit you know underdeveloped but it's gaining tempo so knight b6 will hit the bishop with tempo so the bishop so bishop g4 is kind of a di direct threat so that's why the move h3 is a very very interesting move um, because the point is that after taking on on d4 and taking on d4 knight b6 bishop to b3 we still have this bishop which is quite strong um, and white has the cent center, so black has the bishop pair, but this bishop only have was probably one sensible s uh, square. And after rook e1, white has some, at least uh, a nice position to play. This knight might jump to e5. This knight on, on b6 is not, s not so good. So and in, actually here even uh, black managed uh, white managed to to win the game. So okay, so here we have another position. Um, white is uh, slightly better, I would say. He has a very nice bishop, putting pressure on the queen side. Black is a bit underdeveloped. Uh, white has some space advantage. So here the uh, black played the logical move queen to c8 planning to exchange uh, bishops so here white played again another logical move rook to e1 so the point if uh, white develops a piece with bishop to b2 then bishop h3 and then black is managing to exchange this worse bishop for this nice bishop so i'm not saying that uh, black is equalizing probably white is still having some edge but at least white is you know playing against uh, black's plan so it makes life harder for for black so rook e1 and the game continued uh, rook d8 so i'm going forward a little bit and again after bishop h3 planning to exchange bishops then again bishop to h1 is another prophylactic move interesting so in an white would be dreaming of some bishop takes queen takes and bring in some knight to g4 which is still very very far away just to threaten the king but that's why white keeps keeps cool and just keeps the the strong bishop uh, so i'm going to continue the game by the way here after knight a7 uh, white is playing with the the good bishop putting pressure on the queen side this is a typical i would say a, a very good English uh, line for for white and then uh, if we go forward then white converted the, the the game with a very nice sacrifice that we'll check shortly so here bishop takes is seemingly bad because it gives the the very strong bishop but after f takes here comes the brilliant queen takes the point is that after b7 queen b8 just stopping b8 equals queens then here will come um, basically white is planning to play bishop to a5 bishop to c7 and after queen takes then uh, white will queen on b8 but here uh, what i really liked about this move is another prophylactic move even though it was not necessary it's still interesting not to give chances to your opponent so here uh, white played the move e4 which is i think really nice move the point is not necessary but still i want to mention it as a prophylactic move the point is that after bishop a5 then black would have tried e4 um just even though it's too short to play d5 and bishop e5 to control the pawn after c7 bishop takes a uh, queen takes and b8 queens at least so here uh, white 
it's an exchange app, but at least here the bishop is, is active. So, whereas in the game after e4, d5, we get the same variation, and uh, black's bishop is still really bad, just not, not active at all. So after queen takes and b8 queens, uh, black, uh, white won easily, because it, here it's a clear exchange up and, and the better piece. The rook is much better than the, than the bishop. So we see that this very important, uh, we can maybe say psychological value of, you know, playing prophylactic chess, just frustrating your opponent. I think it's very important because your opponent might get, uh, uh, might lose a lot of time trying to find a new plan, trying to adapt to the new situation. So it's sometimes difficult. And here, uh, this position uh, between Schlechter and Nimsovich, played in 1907. Here, uh, white seems quite fine because white has a space advantage. Some c4, c5 ideas to maybe exchange and create a weak pawn on d6. And here also there is another idea, which is to push sometimes f4. And here black played um, the very interesting move from the practical point of view. So here black played the move knight to h8. So uh, I would like to ask you to pause the video and just try to understand why this move was played. So before we check this move, here knight h4 was another move, maybe. Just trying to exchange pieces, but the point is that here black is probably trying to to equalize, but nothing more, sorry. After knight to h4. Um, because as we said, white has a small space advantage, no weaknesses. Whereas knight to h8 is more provocative, um, and it is directed against one of white's plans, which is f4. White continued with knight to g1, and here came the move, another prophylactic move, g5, okay? So uh, if bishop to g5, then g3 and f4 is coming, so that's why g5 was played. And here uh, White played g3, which is probably not the best move. Here it was very interesting for White to play knight to f3, and after knight g6, knight to g, knight to g3, and then White is looking at the weaknesses created by the move g5. And after g3, knight g6, then uh, white, black is, has, a, has a good game. And here the game continued, queen d1, bishop g7, queen f3. Again here a5 is another uh, prophylactic move, just stopping the queen side expansion we, we mentioned about. Knight e2, bishop b5, a4, bishop d7. And here, um, white is really playing aggressively, so here, here he made the move rook to h1. So a move like this looks uh, quite weird, but again, white probably, as you can imagine, has the idea to push h4. And here came, honestly, a very deep maneuver by Nimsovich, who played queen e8. And we'll understand why this was played. After h4, here he played queen to c8. So the point it was that after taking on, on on g4 and taking the knight, queen h5, we see that white at least is getting extremely active. So at least he, he's just carrying out his plan. Whereas after queen to c8, his uh, black is counter-attacking and just playing against this plan actively. So this is why it's very, very interesting. And, and in fact, the game after continued uh, bishop to d3. The point is that after h4, uh, taking on, on on g5, bishop g4, queen g2, queen takes, win, wins a piece. Although the situation might be a, a bit tricky after taking on h6, but black is at least a piece ahead. And after bishop d3, bishop g4, queen g2, pawn takes h4. Uh, now we see that white uh, couldn't carry out his plan of playing queen h5. Here, here he played f3, which is quite interesting. Here came h3, and after queen f uh, queen f1, 
So we see again another plan, plan by, by white, if bishop d7, then g4, this pawn will fall and um, white will get uh, an excellent position. Space advantage, even just this square might be quite weak. So that's why again here Nimsovich played another uh, brilliant move, stopping g4, just don't move the bishop and play f5. It's a a tactical solution. Here's a prophylactic move, but still a very tactical move, just, just to solve this problem. The point is that after taking on g4, taking on e4, uh, black got the piece back. So queen h3, ed, and now uh, after bishop h6, here um, uh, name switch played rook h8, which is correct. The point is that after bishop takes, king takes, then the, the queen is pinned. Okay guys, so that's it for today. So just to, to summarize a few of the most important points ab about this lesson. You know, you always have to focus on, on your opponent's plan as well as your, on your own plan. Um, so sometimes you need to play these prophylactic moves because it is forced. But uh, sometimes, you know, uh, you can neutralize your opponent's plan even though it is not forced, but this can create problems to your opponent and it can uh, give you a psychological edge. And also last but not least, uh, sometimes whenever you don't know what to do, it's very useful to just focus on your uh, what your opponent wants to do and, to, and just try to, to stop his idea. So sometimes your plan might be to play against your opponent's plan. So I'll talk to you next time. Bye bye.